Okay, welcome back to another episode of Carl's Scale Model Showcase. And this episode has been long awaited for all the subscribers that uh, chose to stay subscribed to my channel as it's been quite a while since I've posted anything. Um, probably close to four months now I'm thinking <clears throat> but regardless <clears throat> thank you for for everybody that uh, stuck with the channel and all you people that are seeing this rig for the first time this is uh, Ravel's Kenworth K100 that came out uh, five or six years ago now uh, the flat top and for those of you that have been uh, watching this channel for any amount of time you'll see this has been an ongoing project of mine um, four or five <coughs> uh, updates all together I think um, but regardless we are working we have been working on the 53 foot Tritum Cataliner uh, that was the plan all along and let's just see if I can just kind of move the camera here to get some different views that's not too bad there so yeah um, I wasn't uh, happy with the 48 foot version which has been around forever the uh, the old Wilson livestock trailer um, but this one here is uh, been chopped and cut to uh, specification for a scaled down 53 footer um, it wasn't easy by any means due to the fact that to get the uh, geometry right so to speak um, there's 24 cuts in two different kits on this um, to make all the uh, to make all the slats and holes and everything kind of look right so in my opinion anyways um, I looked at a lot of video or uh, pictures and, and drawings of, of these trailers and what I didn't change is uh, anybody that's that knows these cattle liners is um, on the on the rear tried them here uh, a lot of the more modern ones that are 53 feet long or even 48 they don't have the the miter cut there for the part of the uh, I guess fender or, or uh, just ahead of the, the lead axle there um, a lot of the times now they're rounded uh, more contoured I guess and um, you know there's numerous changes uh, to be honest but for this one here I don't know like I said you got your your 48 foot I'm just gonna try and get a, a view from here hold this tripod steady so you know to me it looks bang on scale there um, I had to I had to uh, modify just get this better here I had to modify the front uh, part of the neck there uh, with the kingpin just because in order it in order for it to look right and then you know be able to clear the mud flaps if it were turning right um, this was too short so we lengthened it by one section and it was just enough to have a longer neck and um, sit properly in my opinion uh, kind of right over the center of the drives there which is which is where it should be but so so yeah the the Kenworth there's a really nice video on that on the truck itself and then the uh, like I said the trailer she's coming along she's uh, got some tape on the back side and the reason that's in there, I'll show you, is I uh, can't really see it because not really filming here at the best time of the day, but 
Anyway, there is some tape, a little bit of, little bit of uh, green tape, and it's covering the holes. The reason that is, is because I had more of a, or a darker gray. You can see it's pretty dark inside there. So in the back here, um, I wanted to keep it a darker color. It's uh, it's just um, well, what do you call it? One of those rust-oleum cans. It's it's just their medium gray, I guess. Um, and then the uh, trailer isn't going to stay in primer like it is now. The um, the trailer is going to get painted in. Uh, a nice aluminum. I find that Rust-Oleum two times uh, their metallic aluminum it uh, it comes out actually nice and shiny and doesn't wear off and um, so that's the color we're gonna go with when we when we do the final paint on it. The one thing that has been talked about in a previous video and again I'm just gonna hold the camera here so in order to get the 53 foot length, and I'm just gonna walk down the side of the roof here. In order to get that 53 foot length, we had to do two roof sections and then tie the front cap into it. And you can see right, right in there, there's a little hole that needs to be filled yet. We've tried to keep that separation line there equal. There's a little bit of work to do on that corner. Pretty minor. It's just a filing job. And then on this side, a little bit more cleanup. You can see that uh, gap there is a little bit more prominent from this view. But the thing is, is that right around here, somewhere in there, and I'll just try and take some different shots of it here, like, um, you know, it would be right in there somewhere, was the parting line, the connection line, where I joined the roof sections together, and I got it fairly, I got it fairly smooth. Um, and even without touching any of the rivet detail but and again I'll hold this steady here as I can what I ended up doing was because I couldn't see it see there's a little tiny right in the center there's a little tiny blemish that needs to be worked out very minor but as you can see down the entire roof line here right to the back I couldn't do it so I took the rivets off completely I was like okay I'll just take off the section that was cut and do about an inch each way or whatever whatever gets it blended and then replace those rivets on there because I bought some from this deco company that makes some uh, archer is what what they're called or the manufacturer and uh, I found a thing on online somewhere before where it was saying that uh, there's a certain scale there uh, I'll pull them out here actually in the end of this video um, that certain scale was uh, perfect for 125th scale trucks 124 scale trucks and because um, these guys I think it's more of a uh, model railroading um, it's more directed towards that but like I said in order you know even to put them rivets from Archer in there it's it wasn't gonna look exactly like <clears throat> it wasn't gonna look like exactly like the rest of the the roof line so it's just like you know what I said I, I thought about it for like two weeks and I'd be laying there thinking about it trying to go to sleep and I was just like you know what I'm just gonna sand it off completely so it's all gone and now what I might do is say hey you know what we're gonna hit it hang on I'm gonna get a different uh, I'm gonna get a different view here so I, I thought about it 
And um, I decided, you know what? <clears throat> we'll see what it looks like when it's painted. And at that point, you know, I might just leave the rivets off. I, you know, I mean, it's not, I'm not entering this one in a contest or anything like that. Um, uh, that's usually never the motivator uh, behind in any of the builds I do. But uh, not to say I haven't entered a contest uh, in the past. So, regardless, uh, I think she's coming along pretty good. I'm going to try and move this setup I got. It's a little bit finicky here. Yeah, so there's a different shot there. Um, more of a, a, a good side view where you can really see the, the length. If you had a 48 footer and a, and a standard uh, AMT cab over like a Freightliner or Astro or whatever, uh, even this Ravel Kenworth, um, the frame on the Kenworth itself has been lengthened one inch. Um, and the, uh, like I said, the trailer has been uh, scaled out to be 53 feet. So definitely longer than a box stock rig. And, um, you know, I did paint the... I'm just going to take this and uh, move it in a little bit more here. <clears throat> I did paint the um, the stock wheels. I painted them in a blue color. And, of course, the frame itself. Yeah, so there. I did paint the, um, the wheels, the stock wheels, uh, the blue with the chrome, um, chrome rings and, and center caps there. And then the suspension, you can kind of see there, it's painted uh, the same color blue, uh, obviously, as the tractor. So it's kind of like, you know, this guy's a farmer. Um, you know, he's farming livestock of some sort, and uh, he's got his own rig here. Takes a lot of pride in it, and, um, you know, he's got it basically color matched here, so... Yeah, so it's um it's pretty long to try and try and get the whole truck in there in some shots or whatever, but I like to uh you know I like to display it in a few different ways there. So you know, I got the passenger door passenger door open and uh the wheels turned a little bit and whatnot. Um you know we can we can kind of see the interior. Like I said, I'm not really filming at the best time of the day here, but there's been a there's been a video done on this truck already. And it's kind of like a burgundy and gray in there. You know, he's got his custom uh, factory paint job there with the with the stripes and the pinstripes and whatnot. And um, you know, for an older kit, these doors close up pretty good actually. So, but uh, yeah, with the with the uh, with the triaxle unit there, try and get her in there a little bit. Once the back of the trailer is done, so like the mud flaps, I've I, I, I kind of mocked it all up here, and the mud flaps come down. The gap between this little skirt here and the mud flap is identical, so it's going to look uniform that way. The uh, back bumper will go on, and the Jane Man Mansfield T-bar, <clears throat> and um, yeah, the doors, I'm going to make the roll-up door actually function uh, to the best of my ability. The, um, the uh, I've, I've, I remember building this kit as a kid, and that door was kind of finicky, and then I saw a couple other videos from builders on YouTube there. And uh, they were saying the same thing that, you know, it is a little bit tricky, but it can be done. Yeah, so there's a good video of, uh, of an update on this thing now. Um, the next one, I'll have the final paint on. We'll be dressed up with the, uh, with the decals. We're going to go with the Bixby. Uh, livestock decals uh, just because 
it's a match and uh, I just I like having my trucks with some kind of company thing on there so um, yeah like I said I wanted to finally do an update here I've been working uh, just uh, a whole whack this summer and fall and been meaning to get one of these done and posted uh, once again I certainly appreciate everybody that stuck with my channel and um, I actually managed to get a couple of new subscribers uh, during the time here where I haven't posted anything for quite some time but um, yeah there we are the Revell K100 uh, flat top with the uh, AMT Wilson livestock van kit bashed into a kit bashed into a 53 foot triaxle and uh, we're not committed to the spoke wheels yet they're not on there they're just on the metal axles um, I may actually just go to a, a 10 hole Alcoa wheel and um, we'll see I just thought the color coding might look pretty cool with the rest of the uh, blue on the truck so um, I'll just uh, grab those decals here for the rivets and give that a little plug yeah so there we are there's these um, here I'll just go on this one so it's not so shiny G scale Archer fine transfers you can check out their website they got a whack of stuff that you might find handy um, there's the suspension and yeah wasn't too hard just measure measure a bunch of times and just make sure everything's equal just how the real thing would be um, <clears throat> Again, with the rivets here, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I think, you know, I'm just going to give it, I'm going to fix a couple of those imperfections. And then I'm going to hit it with the, uh, with the aluminum and uh, probably call her good. Because I'm not too concerned. At least uh, you can't see the, the seam where the roof panels join together. And... As far as the rest of it goes, um, you know, there's primer all over the place. Once we get the uh, silver on there, we'll be okay. But you can see there's some there's some length here to the to the neck or whatever the front, and get that kingpin further up there. Um, we're going to incorporate the winch system. Uh, it's not going to be that detailed, but it'll still look like it's there. So, and of course, the cattle chute or the uh, I should say livestock ramp is still in there. Um, took a lot of cutting and, and piecing uh, to make this as it is and you know the inside there and like i said if i take the camera and just kind of try and get a here's a steady kind of pan of it you know it's gonna look pretty good it's gonna look like it's one piece and that's the uh that's the whole idea so once again <clears throat> Thank you very much for tuning in and for sticking it out on the channel. We're going to try and, uh, winter's coming here in Canada, so we're going to try and um, <clears throat> get some more modeling done. We got a Western Star, uh, we've got like three or four cab overs now. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is a conventional, and it's the uh, uh, Italy. 4964 
conventional. I converted it into a decal and uh, it's going to be like a mustard yellow co color. Um, there's also, uh, those of you who have seen on a previous video, my 116 scale um, Kenworth, which I'm turning into the, uh, the oil field truck that I uh, actually used to drive when I worked for a company called Frackmaster and uh, worked the, the hard oil patch of Alberta. But anyways, thanks again for tuning in and uh, keep on building those models.